Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the fuser unit uh, or even to remove and reinsert the fuser unit on uh, some Samsung printers like the uh, CLP360, CLP365, uh, even the Wi-Fi version, so the CLP365W the C410W and even the HP 150A and um, some different models that use the same fuser unit. So uh, just before the starting of the repair I would like to tell you something. Uh, the repair that I'm going to perform is uh, taken by the official documentation, so the service manual of uh, the these printers, but with only one difference. Uh, the Samsung uh, official documentation does not tell you to remove uh, the front uh, cover, the front panel, in order to remove uh, the right panel that we have to remove. But uh, removing the right panel without removing the front one is a pain because there's, a, there's this piece uh, and it's difficult to get it past through here. So I will show you even how to remove uh, the entire front panel. It's easy and it uh, makes your, your life easier when you repair these printers, so why not? Okay, so first of all, we will need to remove uh, the front panel. And uh, to do so, you need to use a slotted screwdriver, place it inside here, so uh, between the front panel and this black cover. This covers a uh, cable that we need to disconnect, so we apply some tension here and uh, remove uh, this black cover here. Okay, this one. Then we need to disconnect this cable, so you can just pull on the cable while you push on uh, the lock tab on the connector can see it has a lock tab on the top. Then to remove the front panel, you need to push on this plastic part over here while you push the entire um, front panel to the right. So let's do it now. Okay. And uh, here you have the entire front panel. So then we need to rotate the printer to the back side and uh, we need to remove four screws at the back. So these two and these two. Okay, so at this point we need to open the back cover and uh, apply some uh, tensions and do some, le some levering to the sides in order to disconnect some clips. You can see here we have the line of separation between the back cover and uh, the left cover, you need to apply some tension in these areas to disconnect two clips each side. Do the same thing to the other side. It's pretty easy and you don't need to apply a lot of tension, a ton, a lot of tension because you can uh, easily uh, damage those and then your back cover will not latch correctly. So do the same thing on the top to disconnect the top clips and now you can remove uh, the back cover. You can see we have uh, three clips at the top and two clips each side. So at this point before moving the fuser unit completely we need to disconnect some cables, but uh, uh, first of all we need to disconnect uh, or well remove uh, this cover, this right cover. To remove this, there are two clips at the front of the unit. You can see them indicated by two arrows and we have to pry a little bit to these two spots to release them. And at the same time, you need to do the same thing on the bottom in order to release this. 
So now it's released on the bottom and on the side and we need to release it on the top. Okay, so this panel has been released. Okay, so we need to remove two cables. One is this and one is this. And uh, in order to remove this cable, we need to remove this cover on the power supply. And uh, before starting to disassemble this section of the power supply, I need to tell you something very important when you work on uh, equipment that includes a power supply built in, like uh, most printers, uh, TVs or any other uh, appliance that includes a power supply. If you haven't disconnected the printer from the electrical line, this is now essential that you do, because inside here there's uh, live electricity, so if you touch something you're not supposed to touch, you can definitely be electrocuted, so that, that is important. Even if the power is disconnected, there's a capacitor inside here that can actually uh, retain some uh, electrical power even after you have disconnected the power. So I will show you the part that you don't have to touch and uh, how you can avoid it. So you need to remove two screws here, this on this corner and the other one on this corner. So we can now remove uh, the cover of the power supply. And this is the main capacitor that I was talking about. Well, if you touch the capacitor itself, it doesn't hurt, doesn't do anything, but there are two contacts here that you must not touch because uh, even if the power has been disconnected, this can actually uh, retain a charge and uh, hurt you. So don't, don't touch that. So, uh, we need to remove this cable, okay? So we need to push on this locking tab and wiggle the connector to release it, okay? Then we need to remove this cable from uh, this guide, okay? And we need to unplug this connector over here uh, there's a locking tab in here, you need to push it and open it. And both the connectors are now free and disconnected. So let's remove this cable and move to the back side. Okay, so now you need to open this cover. This is the cover of the um, uh, secondary transfer roller. And then we need to disengage two plastic white levers. So you just pull them inside of the machine and down. Same on this side, pull inside of the machine and down. And these are now disconnected. So now we need to remove uh, uh, four screws at the back of the fuser unit. So, By the way, all the screws inside of the machine are uh, identical. Uh, well, in order to perform this repair, the ones you have to remove and the only two different screws are the ones for the power supply cover. So you just the two that you don't have to uh, misplace are those two. Okay, so now we need to remove the fuser unit from inside here. And pay attention because uh, these cables really like to hang to the flat cables and damage them. And uh, another thing that you have to pay attention to is that you don't want to touch or damage this uh, belt here, the transfer belt. It's pretty delicate so you don't want to do that. Uh, and now you have the fuser unit removed uh, and uh, you can uh, even open this uh, top cover and uh, inspect it and look for uh, some irregularities, uh, replace it and uh, any other thing you might want to do to the fuser unit. 
So now we will uh, uh, reinsert the fuser unit inside of the machine and uh, show you how to reassemble the machine and get it back working. Uh, another thing that you can do with uh, fuser units like this, you can uh, just uh, uh, disassemble the fuser unit and, uh, uh, and uh, only replace the two rollers inside of the unit and not the whole unit. Uh, I don't know how much sense it makes in a printer like this because these fuser units are pretty cheap so yeah it's different from the more expensive printers where uh, removing and replacing only the two rollers might make a difference but yeah for a printer like this it's not even very important and not financially that doesn't make so much sense in my opinion anyway Let's reconnect everything and reinstall the fuser unit. So let's take this cables inside here. Okay. Let's get these cables in. And now for the first tricky part. You see these two parts over here on the fuser top cover? Well, they need to line up to the uh, tracks inside of uh, this top cover. So you need to be careful to line those up and insert them correctly in place. Because if you don't do that, uh, when you open the top cover, uh, the fuser cover will not open and that will be totally useless I mean, yeah so now we can connect those white levers again and uh, screw the four screws at the sides of the fuser unit Okay, so we'll rotate the printer to the right and reconnect the cables. So this little cable here needs to pass through this clip that is behind this flat cable and clip in position and then reconnect to the main board. Then this cable needs to pass through this guide here and uh, this is something that is uh, uh, forgotten or uh, left behind by a lot of technicians, even authorized technicians, but that is very important that you let cables pass through the designed guides because uh, uh, this is a very good scenario to demonstrate it. We have a motor here. We have the main motor of the printer. If the cables pass through here, it will rub against this motor and uh, probably short out and uh, can even cause a fire or well something you don't want to experience honestly so uh, if there are cable guides use them to pass cables through so take the cable back in the connector and get the cover on top of the power supply so remember now, the only two different screws are the ones of the power supply cover, so you need to use those two different screws to screw on the power supply cover. Okay, then you need to get the right cover in position, so We'll attach first on the top side because it's the most tricky to get. Okay. Okay, the top side is connected. Let's clip the bottom and the sides. Okay, that's done. So to the back side, now we need to get this back panel in place and it's a similar 
separation. Open the cover, align the panel and clip in the latches at the top. Close the door and uh, clip on the sides. Okay, now we need to reinsert the four screws at the back. Okay, then we need to rotate the printer to the front side in order to reinsert the front panel inside of the printer. To do this, it's uh, pretty simple, you need to line up these uh, black levers here. They need to line up to the laser shutter pins. Okay, then uh, you need to line up the two uh, latches here of the panel and uh, pull the panel to the left and uh, the panel is now installed. Okay, so connect the cable here that checks the toner cartridges, chips and drum. Then take this uh, black cover Get it on the top, latch first the right side and then the left side. And the printer is now completed and uh, reassembled and ready to work. So I will test it now. See the power lead inside. Push the, the power switch see if it goes to the ready state. Heating element of the fuser unit is on, the printer is uh, warming up. Okay, so it's indicating me that the yellow cartridge is not recognized. That can actually happen because I'm using a pretty low quality uh, toner cartridge for the yellow color. So I will just wait for the printer to end this cycle, okay, then we'll just reinsert the cartridge, see if it reads the chip, and now the chip is recognized and uh, the printer is working fine. I would print a test page but I actually don't need to in this case because uh, um, the printer inside of the fuser unit has a, a thermistor that checks for the temperature of the fuser unit, of course, to monitor that the fuser unit is at the correct temperature. So if you power the printer on and uh, you see the heating element comes on and uh, the printer then uh, uh, shuts down and goes to the ready state, sh well, shuts the motor down and goes to the ready state, well, in, it means that it reached the correct temperature and it doesn't have any errors. Uh, the light now is red, of course, because there's no paper inside. So, having said that, uh, I mean, this is the end of the video. So, thank you for uh, watching my video. I hope it has been useful for you. And uh, if you want to repair your own printer, that's great. So thank you for uh, watching again and uh, see you in the next video. If you're interested in uh, uh, printer repair videos uh, or things like that, you can even subscribe to the channel. So other than supporting me, you will be notified by uh, any new videos about uh, printer repair that uh, you could see and watch. So thank you once again. See you in the next one.